Level zero. It looks peaceful, a glowing sphere, burning quietly in space, massive, majestic, and calm. But inside that star, violence hides in balance. Fusion pushes outward, heat and light created by atoms smashing together. Gravity pulls inward, billions of tons of matter crushing down on the core. And for most of a star's life, these two forces are perfectly matched. Tension becomes stability, chaos becomes order, the star survives. But fuel doesn't last forever. First, hydrogen fuses into helium, then helium into carbon, then carbon becomes neon, then oxygen, then silicon. Each new element burns hotter, faster, and shorter. The layers build like an onion, each fusion shell wrapped around a smaller one, and at the center, finally, comes iron. That's where the math breaks. Iron is the dead end of stellar fusion. Instead of releasing energy, fusing iron consumes it. It offers no resistance to gravity's pull. The fusion furnace shuts down. The balance collapses. What happens next takes milliseconds. The core caves in. Gravity accelerates beyond comprehension. Protons and electrons are crushed together into neutrons. The temperature hits 100 billion Kelvin. Neutrinos burst out like a wave of ghosts. There is no explosion, not yet. Just a perfect system that finally ran out of room to hold itself up. This is the quiet before the storm, the pause before the flash, the exact moment a star stops being a star and begins its death spiral. Level 1 The core can't hold, and then everything breaks. This is a Type 2 supernova, the death of a massive star, eight times the mass of our sun or more, not a collapse, a cataclysm. The core's implosion slams the outer layers inward, but those layers don't disappear. They hit the dense neutron core like a cosmic wall. The result? Rebound, shockwave, a detonation that tears the star apart from the inside. Neutrinos, uncountable, unstoppable, flood outward, helping power the blast. In one second, the star releases more energy than our sun will emit in 10 billion years. The light takes hours to reach the surface, but when it does, it's blinding, brighter than an entire galaxy, visible across millions of light years. What's left behind depends on the mass. If it's just heavy enough, the core becomes a neutron star, an object so dense a teaspoon would weigh a billion tons. If it's heavier still, the collapse continues into a black hole. But the real legacy of a Type II supernova is what it leaves everywhere else. Oxygen, calcium, iron, gold. Every heavy element in your body was forged in a dying star like this. Your bones are stellar ash. Your blood carries pieces of ancient firestorms. This isn't just an explosion, it's creation through destruction. Death, that makes life possible. Level 2 Not every giant dies with its armor. Some stars lose their outer layers, stripped of hydrogen or even helium by powerful stellar winds or greedy binary companions. What's left behind is a hot, naked core. And when that core collapses, it doesn't scream as loud, but it still dies in fire. These are Type Ib and Ik supernovae. Like Type II, their core collapse explosions. But without their hydrogen, Ib, or hydrogen and helium, Ik envelopes, they look different through a telescope. Less hydrogen in the spectrum, faster, sharper light curves, a harder flash. Stripped envelope supernovae are common in binary systems, where one star siphons the outer layers of the other. Like cosmic vampires, they weaken their neighbors until the collapse becomes inevitable. Some may even give rise to gamma ray bursts, beams of energy so intense they can fry planets across thousands of light years if pointed directly at them. They're quick, they're brutal, and they don't always leave evidence behind. If a Type II is a funeral with fireworks, Type YBC is a silent detonation. And yet, even in their quiet, they still seed the universe with metals, shockwave turbulence, and gravity waves. Level 3 Some stars don't go out in a blaze of collapse. They wait and then detonate. These are white dwarfs, the burnt-out cores of medium-sized stars like our Sun. They're dense, small, and stable, unless they start to feed. In a binary system, a white dwarf can pull matter from a nearby companion star. It siphons gas like a parasite, slowly, invisibly, until one day, 
it crosses a deadly threshold, the Chandra Sakar limit, about 1.4 times the mass of the Sun. Then, all at once, the pressure and temperature spike. Carbon and oxygen ignite in a runaway fusion reaction. There's no time to collapse, no warning. The entire white dwarf explodes instantly. This is a Type IA supernova, a thermonuclear blast with no core left behind, no neutron star, no black hole, just vaporized ash and light. But Type IA supernovae have a different kind of importance, because they're all so similar in brightness, everyone triggered at roughly the same mass. Astronomers use them as standard candles to measure distance across the universe. They're how we discovered the universe is expanding and accelerating. Dark energy, galaxy distribution, cosmic mapping, all of it rests in part on the reliable death of white dwarfs. They don't collapse, they ignite, and in their destruction, they give us a ruler that spans the stars. Level 4 Most supernovae shine bright, but a few go superluminous. 10. Sometimes a hundred times more powerful than typical explosions. These are the giants of giants, and we're still not entirely sure how they work. Superluminous supernovae, SLSNE, come in different forms, but they all have one thing in common. Brightness that breaks expectations. Some might be powered by magnetars. Newborn neutron stars spinning at incredible speeds, wrapped in magnetic fields, trillions of times stronger than Earth's. As they slow down, they inject energy into the expanding cloud, fueling a longer, brighter burn. Others may be interacting with supernovae, where the explosion crashes into a dense shell of material previously blown off by the star. That collision converts kinetic energy into light, like a cosmic traffic accident radiating energy in every direction. Some even show strange, slow light curves, lingering for months, glowing steadily. We see them in distant galaxies, lighting up entire regions. Some of the brightest ever recorded happened billions of light years away, yet we still caught them with Earth-based telescopes. And here's the thing, we didn't even know they existed until the last two decades. These aren't just explosions, they're mysteries, signals from rare, extreme lives, and even more extreme deaths, and they suggest that the cosmos still holds surprises we haven't begun to map. Level 5 Now we cross into the truly exotic. A normal supernova destroys the outer layers of a star, but what if the entire star, all of it, detonated? No core, no neutron star, no black hole, just obliteration. This is a pair instability supernova, a rare fate reserved for the most massive stars in the universe, 130 to 250 times the mass of the sun. Monsters that live short, hot lives and die in physics-breaking explosions. Here's how it works. At these extreme masses and temperatures, the core begins producing gamma rays. And when those gamma rays collide with each other, they don't create light. They create matter, electron-positron pairs. This reduces pressure, gravity surges, the core partially collapses. But instead of bouncing back or forming a black hole, it ignites in an unstoppable fusion chain. Oxygen, silicon, and other elements fuse in seconds. The entire star goes up in one final, complete thermonuclear burn. No remnants, no echo, just a cloud of heavy elements racing outward at 10,000 kilometers per second. We've never observed one directly, but we've seen hints, light curves that match the models, and strange chemical signatures in ancient star systems. And in the early universe, where stars were larger and metal poor, Pair instability supernovae might have been common. Their explosions seeded the first galaxies with iron, magnesium, and calcium. They may have built the scaffolding for second-generation stars and for everything that followed. This isn't just death, it's a reset button, the kind of supernova that doesn't leave behind a monument, just a scar, written in radiation and time. Level 6 Not massive enough to collapse into black holes, not small enough to die quietly. These stars sit in the middle, eight to ten times the mass of the sun. And when they die, they don't go with a bang, not at first. Instead, they slip into a rare kind of explosion, the electron capture supernova. It starts with a core rich in oxygen, neon, and magnesium. As pressure builds, electrons, the very particles that help resist collapse, get absorbed by neon and magnesium nuclei. 
It's like suddenly removing the floor beneath your feet. Pressure crashes, gravity wins. But unlike massive Type 2 supernovae, the energy here is modest, the explosion is dimmer, the ejected material is slower. Some may even resemble faint Type 2 events in the sky. Unless you're looking closely, electron capture supernovae may have created the first neutron stars we ever detected. They could also explain certain chemical patterns in extremely old stars, signatures that suggest lighter explosions with unusual element ratios. They're rare, but they matter, because even the quietest star deaths rewrite the chemistry of galaxies. Level 7 Not every star gets a farewell. Some just vanish. These are the failed supernovae, sometimes called unnovae. Massive stars collapse under their own weight. We expect an explosion, a flash, a blast wave. But sometimes it doesn't happen. Instead of blowing apart, the star's core collapses directly into a black hole. No visible supernova, no expanding nebula, just darkness. Astronomers have watched stars brighten slightly, like they're preparing to die, and then slowly fade from view, never to return. The best guess? They skipped the boom and went straight to the singularity. One star in the galaxy, NGC 6946, did exactly that. Observed for years, then gone. No explosion, just silence. This is more than a curiosity. It solves a mystery. Why do we see fewer supernovae than we expect based on the number of massive stars? Some of them may be failing, dying invisibly, and in that failure, they succeed at becoming the most extreme objects in the universe. Level 8 These stars are already dead, but their story isn't over. Neutron star mergers are the cosmic aftermath of previous explosions. Two neutron stars, city-sized spheres of collapsed matter, caught in a gravitational dance, orbiting each other for millions of years. Then, they collide. The impact releases gravitational waves, gamma rays, and a flood of heavy elements, including gold, platinum, and uranium. It's called a kilonova, not quite a supernova, but powerful enough to make atoms that stars alone can't. In 2017, we saw one. For the first time, telescopes and gravitational wave detectors work together. GW170817. The light matched the ripples in space-time. We saw a flash, a radioactive afterglow, and the birth of elements in real time. This wasn't just a scientific milestone. It was confirmation. The precious metals we value didn't form in stars. They formed in collisions between the dead. Supernovae start the story, but neutron stars write the epilogue. Level 9 This isn't a supernova. It's a super weapon. When the most massive stars collapse, 30, 50, even 100 times the sun's mass, they sometimes do more than form black holes. They unleash jets, relativistic jets, beams of energy moving just shy of light speed. And if one of those jets is pointed at Earth, we see a gamma ray burst, the most violent explosion in the modern universe. The leading theory? A hypernova an extreme version of a core collapse supernova where the energy isn't just expelled, it's focused. These jets rip through the dying star, blasting gamma rays across galaxies. A long-duration burst lasts about 30 seconds, but releases more energy than the Sun in its entire 10-billion-year lifetime. In 2008, we saw one come from 13 billion light-years away, a death so distant its light started traveling before Earth had continents. If a gamma ray burst hit Earth directly, it could strip away our atmosphere, destroy the ozone layer, and trigger a mass extinction. Some scientists even believe one may have caused an extinction event 450 million years ago. Hypernovae don't just end stars, they reshape galaxies, their death as spectacle. Level 10 What if death isn't the end? Let's enter the imagination now. Some physicists believe that neutron stars, already the densest objects in the known universe, might not be the final stop. If you squeeze a neutron star even further, compressing the neutrons themselves, you could create something stranger, a quark star, made entirely of free quarks, the fundamental building blocks of protons and neutrons. And the transformation from neutron star to quark star, that might release energy. It's called a quark nova, a second explosion delayed by years, triggered by internal collapse at the quantum level. 
the energy released could rival or exceed the original supernova. But here's the truth. We haven't seen one. Yet. No light curve. No spectral fingerprint. No confirmed detection. Still, some theorists suggest that strange anomalies in gamma-ray bursts or superluminous supernovae might be hints, signs of a second detonation hidden in the data. If quark stars exist, they'd rewrite our understanding of matter. They'd suggest a deeper layer to reality, one where even dead stars can evolve. Level 11. This one doesn't come from nature. It comes from intelligence. Imagine a civilization advanced enough to control stars, not observe them, not predict them, but trigger them. Artificial supernovae are a hypothetical idea, part of Kardashev Type 2 or 3 civilizations, capable of manipulating stellar energy directly, maybe as a weapon, maybe to harvest energy, maybe to study physics at scales we can't yet reach. You'd seed a star with exotic matter, inject antimatter, collapse a white dwarf on command, use black hole triggers. The methods are theoretical. The concept is chilling. Would it be detectable? Possibly. A supernova with an unusual chemical signature. A burst of neutrinos followed by radio silence. Light curves that don't match natural patterns. So far, nothing fits. But if we ever saw one, we might not be watching a death. We might be watching engineering. And if someone out there can blow up stars on purpose, the question isn't how. It's why. Level 12. There's one more level, not an explosion, a reset. Modern physics suggests our universe sits in a false vacuum, a state of reality that isn't the lowest possible energy level. Somewhere, in theory, there could be a deeper vacuum, a truer one. And if the wrong kind of event creates a crack in our vacuum state, it could collapse. A vacuum decay. It starts with a quantum fluctuation, maybe sparked by a high energy event, like a supernova, or black hole merger, a bubble of true vacuum forms. It expands at the speed of light, and everything it touches, physics changes. Electrons may not exist, atoms may fall apart, chemistry could end, and we'd never see it coming, because it would arrive at light speed, unannounced, unstoppably. No explosion, no warning, just the end of all structure, and a new set of rules. This is the rarest kind of speculation, but not fantasy. It emerges directly from the equations of quantum field theory. We don't know if vacuum decay will happen, or if it already has, in a galaxy too far to matter. But we know one thing. Every supernova, every collision, every cosmic fireball reminds us that even stability has an expiration date. Like what you just learned. Hit subscribe. We've got more cosmic chaos coming. Before you go, here's a question. If a nearby star went supernova tomorrow, how far would it need to be to not fry Earth's atmosphere? Drop your guess in the comments. Stay curious. Stay alive. See you next time.